Okay, let's look at his question from the the book twenty number twenty seven on the book. Uh, it says the two vertical walls are separated by a distance distance of one point five meter, and then the wall one is smooth, wall two is not, and if he plays like this and. Uh, and the, qu uh, the question tells you the static friction coefficient is 0 0.98 between the board and the wall 2. The question asking what is the, the length of the longest board that can be propped between these two walls. Uh, the information known is the uh, st uh, static coefficient of static friction and the length of the, uh, the board. Uh, no, not length. It's the the distance between two walls, and I don't even know the uh, friction, uh, the gravitational force. So, draw a free body diagram. You can see there's a normal force from wall one, normal force from wall two, uh, friction going up uh, from between the board and the wall two. Of course, gravitational force. So, for the board to be in static equilibrium for the board to be in static equilibrium so we should have all the net force equal zero for example horizontally you should have all the force added together equal zero so you can tell you should have fn1 equals fn2 right that's only two horizontal forces they must be equal and let's make it equal fn and then we don't need to worry about two variables so there's only one variable and also vertically all the forces add together should be zero so you have only two vertical forces so you can see uh, the f f should equal fg okay now if you look at this uh, uh, f e ff equals fg uh, there's a two uh, how many variables so uh, one variable fn and then FF equals FG, but there's a relation between the FF and FN. So it should be equals mu S times FN, right? Uh, if we know the, the mass of the uh, FG, so you can already find out the forces, but if, unfortunately we don't know the FG. So it's not enough to solve all the variables. and. Uh, of course, the question is not asking for FG or FF. It's asking what's the longest the board. So another uh, formula uh, you have to use is net all the torque added together equals zero, right? And sometimes you can just write net torque equals zero. And when you talk about the net torque, very important thing you have to take a point as axis of rotation. So I would take the point B since there's more forces uh, acting at the B. So take B as axis of rotation. Okay, and then these two forces uh, is still there, but only they are not creating any torque. So if you take it as axis rotation, then look at the direction of, of torque created by each forces. For the Fn, now I call it Fn because both Fn1 and Fn2 become Fn now. So the Fn is going to create a torque clockwise, and Fg is going to create torque counterclockwise. So we can make the uh, Fn uh, torque, torque, Fn1 should equal torque Fg, right? So instead of make all the uh, torque added together equal zero, I can simply make this two torques equal. 
Okay, the find of the torque, you use the force, so Fn, multiply the lever arm. So what's the lever arm for the Fn? This is the axle rotation. So you extend this uh, Fn, and then the distance perpendicular to this one, it should be here. So that should be the lever arm for the F N one. Uh, use the trigonometry, right? Trigonometry you can find it out. Uh, let's make the angle. So let's make this angle. Uh, this angle being theta. Okay, and of course the angle is theta here too. So that's the theta. So uh, it should be the F L F N one should equal uh, L L is uh, the the length. Uh, let me write here. L is the length of uh, the board. Right. Okay. F N times L. L then should be sine theta. Okay, so L times sine theta should be the L F N one. And look at his F G. So F G should be uh, okay. The lever arm for F G should be uh, from here to here, right? So basically, if you extend this, so this is gonna be the L. FG. Okay, so calculate this. It should be one over L, half of the L, the hypotenuse right here. Look at this triangle here. So then cos theta. So L over two, and then multiply cos theta. Okay, so from this equation, uh, we can actually solve the angle theta. So you see, you can cancel the L. Uh, of course, you need to plug in the uh, Fn. Uh, Fn and Fg, there is a relation. Look at it here. We can replace the Fg with mu s Fn. So plug in this. So we got Fn times L sine theta equals Fg. Replace Fg with mu s Fn. So mu s Fn and times L over 2 cos theta. Okay, so now our strategy is to find out the theta, and then after you get a theta, because you know this distance, then you can find out the, the, the L. Okay, so this equation to find out theta, you divide by the cos theta, and basically uh, you can just you this way. So divide by divide by the same stuff and make sure you can find out the theta. So I would divide by cos theta here and a cos theta here so so that I can cancel the cos theta and then become tangent to theta. And also other stuff you have to divide it as well. So I don't want anything here, so I would divide Fn times L and Fn times L, right? You have to divide the exact same thing here. So then this is gone, and the Fn is gone, L is gone. So you can see now you got what you got left is tangent theta equal equals mu and uh, over 2. So you got a mu s divided by 2. And of course 0 0.98 is a mu divided by 2 should be 0 0.49. So now just use the calculator to find out the angle. And we get theta equals 26 degree. 26.1 degree and since you got the theta and the L is easy to find so the the length of the board L 
uh, because uh, 1.5 divided by L should equal cos theta. And then the L is just going to be 1.5 divided by cos theta. And theta is 26.1 degree. And uh, we do the calculation, so we should get 1.67 meter. Okay, so this question, you know, the process, if you look at the last step, the tangent theta is only equals mu s over 2, right? You don't need any other information, uh, like the mass of the, the board. You don't need it, right? Uh, the tricky thing is uh, why is the question asking for the longest board? Uh, think about this. If the board is long, too long, so uh, like if it's extremely long and then the is it has to be propped uh, when it's almost vertical, right? And then you can imagine that's not easy to hold because. Uh, if you put it this way, uh, so the torque uh, created by the the Fn one is going to be big, right? And then it's gonna turn that way. So, uh, so when it's longest, of course, you should have your your friction like greatest, right? Uh, yeah, this is a. Uh, another way to explain is when it's very long uh, because the torque created by the Fn1 uh, is going to be great because the lever arm is great and then you don't need a lot of Fn1 but if Fn1 is not much and then the friction is not going to be big as well and then friction should not be able to support the Fg so a lot of way to reasoning uh, so anyway, uh, about the torque, you always follow these three equations. So whenever the object you're interested is in static equilibrium, so you have these three equations, right? And based on a good free body diagram, uh, a good choice of the axis rotation, right? So be very careful. Uh, the direction of torque uh, and the magnitude is all depending on where you choose your axis rotation. Okay, so that's it.